So what I've got from one of our friends here is kind of an invitation. It's less of a question, but more of an invitation or a sharing of something exciting that he's discovered. I can't pronounce her name, Riyamfa or something like that. But, um, but anyway, our friend goes on to say that he's discovered what he has found to be the secret to all happiness in life. And he says he's studied this to such a de great degree with such fervent excitement that he could probably write a book on it. He says he's searched all the different philosophies and religions and he has come to this one thing that would provide us with great joy and happiness if we could simply yield to it. Now when someone starts talking like that, my ears perk up because these are the things that I look for because like many of us, I struggle with turmoil. I struggle with the monkey mind. I struggle with self-doubt. But I'm always looking for ways and means by which to avert it and then share it with other people. And, uh, and our friend, his, his answer is the same one that I've come up with and that I've experienced many times over and over again in my life, have used to the greatest of its ability and completely lost at certain times. And that is silence solitude, cutting yourself off from the noise and the distraction of the world. Now I'll talk a little bit about that, but before I move forward, uh, one of the people that I go to, one of my mentors, if you will, that I seek advice from when I am feeling lost is Ralph Waldo Emerson. You probably know this. Um, anytime I flip open his books, I find peace in his words. And it, this is a copy of, of uh, Self-Reliance, which is one of my favorite pieces. And there's a line in here that I wanted to share with you, uh, namely our friend who has sent the, the question. But Emerson goes on to say that there are voices in which we hear only in solitude, but they grow faint and inaudible as we enter the world. Society everywhere is in a conspiracy against the manhood of every one of its members. What Emerson essentially is saying here is that when we're in solitude, we're allowed to go in as opposed to always receiving from without. And when we can go within, we're allowed to examine the depths of our heart and our soul. And that's where we'll find many of the either cobwebs or gems that lie within. So my friend, you would probably ask, if, it's so, if this idea of silence is so widespread, if every religion, every philosophy understands that you need solitude, you need silence, you need moments of prayerfulness, then why is it that everyone's not doing it? Well, there are a number of reasons. First, I'd like to explain myself. I found recently that I'm just way too active and that I need to cut back, slow down, and simplify is my motto for the next several months. And it's simply because I've been so active in creating that I never allowed myself the yielding of silence. And oftentimes, life just does that to us, or we allow it to do that to us, because there are always opportunities for us to, to take action in directions that we want, but we resist it. And perhaps the same reason why I resisted it but to a greater degree, most people resist it. It's because of the ugliness they may find on the inside. When you no longer have the input of society, you don't have society telling you what to do. When I say society, I mean even your friends, your family. When you don't have everyone speaking into you, you have no choice but to speak to yourself. And you might find some crazy shit down there. When you're by yourself and you've got to seek yourself, you've got to speak to yourself, because that's essentially what ends up happening, you might not like what you find. You might start growing agitated, irritated, uncomfortable. You start looking for things to do. You pick up your iPhone and you start pedaling away at that. Or you go into the computer. You turn on music. You turn on the television. You cannot be by yourself because the anxiety is a barrier against the fear that lies within. So know that if you're resisting silence and it is the elixir, for all peace, joy, happiness, pleasure, then it's probably because there's something that needs to be dealt with on the inside. And the best thing that you can do is deal with that shit. 
Because if you don't, it acts as a cancer and eats you from the inside out. If you don't go within, if you don't seek silence to go within, then you will go without. You will go without joy, you will go without peace, you will go without pleasure. Because all those things are found when we deal with what's inside. And we can only deal with what's inside when we shut off the television, shut off the computer, turn off your iPhone, stop talking to people, look calling people. We've got to go in. And I found that my most creative work, because you'll find one of two things, and usually when I go in, if I've gotten past the bullshit, sometimes we have to do, that's why I use bioenergetics, it's a way for you to be by yourself and bring up the cobwebs, bring up the mud, so that the purity inside can be expressed and exposed. Once you get past that, and, and don't be afraid of that, don't be afraid of the ugliness inside you. We call it ugly because we're judgmental. We place values judgments on things, but there's nothing ugly about anger. Anger is an emotion, it's right, it's true. Let it out, it only grows ugly when you repress it because you don't look at it. There's nothing ugly about tears, there's nothing ugly about joy, sexual pleasure, laughter. These are all things that make us uncomfortable when we see it in other people, simply because we're suppressing it in ourselves. How many times do you see a grown man cry and you feel weird and shit, right? It's because that guy is showing something that is almost a mirror reflection of the shit you're holding in on your own. When an adult laughs too much, how many times do people get irritated? This bitch won't stop laughing. They get all weirded out. She's crazy. No, she's expressing, she's experiencing, she's feeling. She's letting out that which is within so that she could experience the purity within. Down below that, below the emotion, there's a place of calmness, centeredness, peace. But we've got to get past the bullshit first. And in my experience, when you can settle into that peace, when you've gotten out of your own way, when you've dug up the, the muck, the mud, when you've cleared the cobwebs, you will tap into a resource of vast creativity. In my own experience, when I can get out of my own way, when I've expressed myself through exercise or just through meditation by calming it, when I speak, it's not even like I'm speaking because it's coming from a place that is not Elliot Hulse. It's beyond the personality, it's beyond the character, it's beyond the frustrations, the angers, the, the things that color my personal experience as a human being. Some might say that it's God speaking through you. You're allowed to say that, because when you get out of the way, what else is there? So this is really just a conversation between you and I and anybody else who thinks it's interesting to talk about this stuff. But yes, my friend, you are correct, at least in my experience, and the experience of millions over the past millions of years. I can't really say that, because I don't know about how long we've been here, 10,000? million years, whatever. The point is that this is a universal ideal. And in a world and in a time where noise is at a premium, it's everywhere. Seeking and finding silence will make that individual a mastermind amongst monkey minds. <laughs>